Welcome to Switch It Up. <laughs> we are switching it up today because here we are sitting in this lovely Airbnb and we're out of RV living for a moment. Uh, just a little one. Just a little one. Because we got some repairs that are being made. Yes. And Sheila was like, you know what? We were having this discussion. She goes, let's do a video on the top things. We wish we would have done differently Thank had you. we had known we were going full time. Thank you. That, I needed that one. I know. Okay. Dist, I noticed. <laughs> Wait, let's roll the intro. <laughs> a man and a woman left their home to switch things up and go on the road. And they didn't know where they would go. But it's gotta be better than staying home. They switched it up. They switched it up. And we're back. This is like the good old days, Sheila, like when we were doing videos all the like running down the road and we, we were just coming up with the ideas of what we were talking about and said, okay, let's, let's go through some stuff. And we've learned a lot in three years. Yes, we are getting ready to embark on year four, starting year four. <sighs> Whew. I know, and it's, it's gone so fast. But in looking back, had we had known we were going to go full time, for those of you that are new to our channel, we weren't 100% sure that we were going to be full time. We were just going out to explore the United States maybe for a year and then we were going to come back. And here we are starting year four. But in thinking about that, what would we have done differently if we would have known? Like in the beginning. You, yeah, if you're sitting at home right now thinking about, okay, well, we'll go, we're thinking about going, you're going full time. Well, we would have done some things differently had we had known we were gonna go full time. Mm -hmm. And Sheila, we were talking through, we made a list. Cause we're efficient that way. No, I like lists, that's why. <laughs> that's true too. <laughs> and, I like lists. And some of that came from, you know, all of the travel stuff. So let's go, let's go down through the list. I don't even know the, the how she has it listed and I like spontaneity. So she doesn't tell me and I like it better that way. Right, it just works. I, I like organization, you don't. Yep, so. I like surprises. <laughs> All right, give okay. it, let's get a surprise. Surprise number one. Okay, the first thing that I wish we would have done differently is I think I would have loved to have done more research on the different types of RVs or different manufacturers, different floor plans. Oh, yes. We, um, mm -hmm. there's, there was not, there's not a whole lot of dealers, uh, dealerships inside of Kansas City, which is our hometown. But if we would have just went to like a Tampa RV show In or the, the Hershey show, or even, you know, just to where there's more larger dealerships, we would have saw more options. Yes. I'm not well, saying we would have not have ended up with what we ended up with. Right. The way we came about our RV was we were we were looking for a toy hauler when we decided to take that. Then you started doing research on basically the warranties and what manufacturers right. at the time we felt had we're, the best reviews for taking care of the people on the road. Yeah, and, and for season living. Mm -hmm. And then we decided and, then, and narrowed down to our market Right, which was we, we ended up getting a Grand Design Momentum 395 MS. We might have still chosen that because I still really like our floor plan. I, I like that. That's a good setup. But we, when we headed out within our first four weeks, it's kind of appropriate since Tampa's coming up, um, we headed to the Tampa show. Like the Tampa right. show was the very first place we went. And we were like, well, maybe you weren't, but I was like, look at. Look at that no, one. No, I definitely was. My eyes were like, oh my goodness. See, we had never RV'd before, so we did not know all the different, like the class. Mm -hmm. Like you would say class A, class B, Super C, C's. Super C. We had no idea what you were talking about mm -hmm. in that. So just being at the Tampa show, I was like, wow, there yeah. was a lot more than I had any idea. So and I that, wish we would have done a little bit more That would have been really helpful. Cause we even did a video right out of the box, Alliance versus Grand Design in our first four weeks because we didn't know. And Alliance just launched then, right? which was awesome to see how they were approaching it. And then now we have brands like Brinkley that are yep. rolling down the road and they're coming out with their new toy hauler. So there is there is a lot of benefits to going to a big RV show, flying in for the, the weekend and mm -hmm. seeing everything. Yeah, yep. definitely agree with that. 
Oh, good. This is good. So far, okay. good. What's you, number two? Do you want me to keep going, or are you going to share one that you think? No, I got nothing. You want me to just go down the well, list? Well, I mean, I've got ideas. Well, I've you contributed ideas. to the list. I know. Well, you talked about it, but then I don't know what you settled on. Okay, so. okay, okay. All right, so if we, we would have done more research. That's one of the things that I wish we would have okay. done differently. Okay. Another thing that had we had known, <laughs> but we didn't know, we would not have went so rapidly. Yeah, yeah. Now that was, if you think back on when we started, that was kind of an, um, that we didn't really have a choice. Right. We were just going quickly to see all the things that we wanted to mm. check off the list and see. I think we did like almost 30 states that first year. We were moving every three to four days. It was a fast pace. But in our defense, we were thinking that we were going to be coming back home, going back to, um, you know, real jobs mm -hmm. in the in the marketplace and so we, we just we just went on a whirlwind tour we weren't delusional to think that youtube would be any kind of way for us to stay on the road right so it wasn't really in our thought we were just sharing and a lot of you jumped on and, and followed and then a, a lot of you joined the founders club which allowed us to continue down the road and being supporters changed everything and then our first huddle in november changed everything so i yeah, we would have definitely slowed down. Yeah, so if it you was... are thinking about going full time, um, there's you've got a whole list of all the places you want to see. But I think we would have probably taken like let's take a month and really see say, this state or something yeah. like to explore the state more. I get um, antsy though after seven days. So if it was a in my thinking when you say that, I like this idea is like maybe seven days in a specific area and then maybe only move like a hundred miles. Right, and then you check that, that opens, area. Yeah, right. that opens up different areas. But we were moving from big rock <laughs> item to big rock item to like, we were gonna see that national park and that national park. And like we were, we were on the move. And we were doing three videos a week. I have no idea how we did three videos a week. I'm not quite sure how we did that either. Yeah, no wonder people thought we were crazy. We did 150 or 148 videos in 11 months. Well, it's because we were also moving so rapidly. We had to move that fast in order to get the content for that. Yeah. So it was kind of like a double-edged sword. It was fun though. But that's another thing that I, we would do differently if we knew today we were going full-time. Yeah. Like full, like, and we didn't have to worry about other components. Right. Yeah. Definitely would slow down. Would slow down. That. We've yeah. slowed down a lot. Yes. And I've enjoyed that pace. Yeah. Yep. But about 10 days, I'm ready for a new spot. Ready, ready. You get a little, yeah. a little yeah. antsy. Okay, what do we got next? Okay. I got water here. I'm going to need. Next on the list is, okay, we talked about differences in, in our RV, or like we would have liked to have looked at options for our RV. I think, would we have considered an HDT straight out of the gate? Oh, I remember us talking about this. I didn't know you put that on the list. The answer is, now that I know what we know, because when we got our truck, we were researching, we've never had a big truck, a dually anyway. I've always had F-150s. Knowing everything we know now, I think that really would have opened a possibility because you can right. get an HDT for, a good HDT for around 50 to 60,000. Which and, is less than we paid for our truck. Which, yeah, we paid at the time because trucks were at a premium and there was no negotiation whatsoever. And there was no inventory mm -hmm. either. Inventory was very scarce because like, they were all waiting on computer chips. Mm -hmm. So we paid around 103000 for our truck and we flew to Chicago to pick it up and never even test drove it. They tried to sell it from underneath us even yeah, like, before we got there. Yeah, it was just a hot market at that time. I think in my mind, I just thought that those HDT trucks mm -hmm. were um, unattainable. Just a lot more money mm -hmm. than they really are, and especially if you can find one that's already modified with yeah, a bed. Yeah, that's bid. the key. That yeah. is the key. And there's a lot of now that we've gone down this path and done a couple videos. There's a lot of Facebook groups that people are selling their already modified HDTs. Yeah. I think that is the key because a bed build on a on a used HDT, honestly. There's a few different places you can go to find them, but they'll range on the very low side at $30,000 up to $100,000, depending on what you want to do as your bed build. So absolutely finding one that's already modified is key to that, and you could still get it less from what you would pay for 
Yeah, we just didn't even mm -hmm. know that was an even option. And that would have also then changed the our options of what we could have done for um, an RV. Yeah. Because we might not had to have went with a toy hauler because the toys could have been um, on the HDT. There's a there's definitely a lot of perks in that realm if you're going full time. Yep. Now we're talking if you're talking seasonal or you're doing three to four or six weeks a year, whatever. That's probably we're we're generally talking a full time. Yep. We're we're here. really talking about what we learned for full timing, mm -hmm. and that just didn't That's occur, a good one. Get, occur to us as an option. Yeah, we had this great discussion on that, and I didn't know you'd put it on the list. Okay, see, this is surprising. I like this. <laughs> is this number three? Four? I don't know. I don't have them in like a. Okay. Uh, I'm just kind of. Okay, let's talk about what we would have done differently on our rig. Choices that we would have made differently. Oh, this one's an easy one. I I don't know if you have it on the list. Do you have? I have two. Two things we would have done differently on the lithium batteries right out of the box. Oh, Do you well, have then that I, on there? I have three then. Oh, you don't have that on no, there? No, I had it on there. Oh, I how'd just, you have it on there? I just was thinking some. Yes, but lithium batteries, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, right out of the right out of the box. Like there was not. We killed our AGM. Our yeah, okay, AGMs. We killed those within the first couple months yeah nobody explained to me that you can't run an AGM down to zero and then recharge them I just thought yep. that was a thing that you when it died you turn the journey. newbie ma newbie errors mm -hmm. we made we made a ton yeah. of newbie we had to errors. buy four AGMs within the first month because I had already destroyed and them. had we had known we just would have made the upgrade to lithium right out of I the don't, box I honestly don't understand why dealerships don't have like enduro power lithium batteries and some of the others because enduro we do a lot of stuff with them they've really helped us out so much and Harrison's great but just let's just take lithium batteries at a dealership and you're going to buy that should be like hey would you like to upgrade and then be educated and maybe taking if you did two 100 amp hour lithium batteries things really change for you it's I, it's, it's mind-boggling that you they even don't ask that question and maybe some dealerships do well our dealership didn't and i'm not gonna mention them because i'm not so that would be <laughs> that absolutely lithium batteries is a game changer mm -hmm. for how you want to be able to move about the country it just opens up a lot of windows as far as opportunities for more boondocking and for more off-grid even for us, we moved to lithium batteries just because I wanted to be able to come home and see the grandbabies and leave that RV somewhere and know that the refrigerator was going to be fine. Lithium, all the time, would we should have known. Definitely. We should have known that. That is, a, that is a top thing. We've even mentioned it in a lot of our videos. Um, and we mentioned Enduro a lot because Harrison's just been so great to work with. So smaller company we've kind of started he started his business about the time we hit on the road so we feel like he's kind of become family to us yep. and he's always there Great to help guy. so there's my plug for him yeah the other but, thing on the rv that i had that we had we had known um probably would have made the upgrade to dual pane windows oh we don't know that luxury i do know this luxury yeah uh -huh of being in 20 degree weather and frost forming. Scraping the ice off the inside of your window. Dual pane windows at, at, at the time was like, why would we want those? It's fine if you're not ever <laughs> gonna come home or be like for us. We come to Kansas we City. We come to Kansas City and it's, I mean, the temperature just fluctuates so much, but even there's some other places we've been like, even out in the desert, it's nice and toasty oh. during the day, but at night it's, it's just drops. And those windows I think would have made a, I think it would have been worth the investment. I, I agree now. Looking back on it, I was like, nah. But I, as far as like sitting at getting ready to buy an RV, I think this be, that definitely becomes an option for us, yeah. Well, definitely with all of the challenges that we have had, this one for sure would have been an upgrade we would have made. And that would have been <laughs> yeah, adding... I you were going to say. Yeah. <laughs> we would have added on the MoRide independent suspension right out of the gate. <laughs> <laughs> Mo ride if you're watching my goodness you that's a no-brainer uh, and you're gonna say well wait a minute I think isn't that upgrade like maybe eight to fifteen thousand dollars I think again sell if, a kidney I don't know what you it can, takes. No. <laughs> just kidding we have if you've been keeping track of our journey we have broken leaf springs 
um, in was it Wyoming or somewhere in North South Dakota, North Dakota. Then we broke them again, um, and we also lost a tire. And then uh, recently, I ended up replacing them again. Uh, and then this last instance, we were I was driving up to Chicago through to, through Chicago to Elkhart. Um, to drop off because of some other issues we need to have fixed at Elkhart. Hit a bridge at 65 miles an hour next to a semi only to lose another leaf spring on the side of the road in Chicago. Scariest time all by myself because Sheila was with the girls. I think at this point in time, if you're going full time and you have the option or you're looking at the option and you're looking at all the options, I think at the beginning, I was like, I would never put that money in there. I guarantee you. As full timers, absolutely. The roads in this country yeah. need some help. And I, I think that peace of mind yep. would be a wonderful, wonderful deal. So we Mo would Ride. Have lost, we would have seen, gained hours yeah. and hours. And we got the chance to tour Mo Ride when we went up to the Grand Design. So we went to yep. their factory, and I might actually have some footage on that. Um, we went up to the factory to, to meet Jack and the whole team to see how that's going. And yeah, that would move way up our list uh, as far as going full time. Not a plug on that aspect because we don't have it. But the fact is, is we definitely would make a change for that for sure. If we were starting today, that would be one that of the, be. knowing what we know, that would have been one of the top things we would have invested yeah. in. Again, that would be sitting at the dealer going, okay, I want this, I want this. And your life would be completely a lot different yep. in that case. Yep. Good ones, dear. Okay. Okay, what else we got? I don't know. You had HDT, I see that on there. And you had, um, oh yeah, you got MoRide and the independent oh, yeah. suspension. This one. <laughs> I don't this one, I didn't realize how much or how important that it would be, but it would... Being with me okay. in a queen-size bed. Fun fact, do you know we have a queen-size bed and not a king? Because I like to be close to my wife. <laughs> Fun fact, out of all of our 27 years of marriage, I've never been... He's never said, yes, let's get a king-size bed. Nope, no. Nope. Now, she does get the luxury of a king bed when we're on vacations. Yes, every time we get a hotel, I'm like, king, please. It's just every <laughs> once in a while. She's like, like a room. <laughs> I got space. I don't know why. I just always, that's just one just weird. Just your thing? Yeah. Oh. So we have a queen in our, in our RV. Now, you may choose to go full time and have a king. Hey, that's up to you. I, I will say for the amount of time that we spend in bed, it is nice to have the queen because you need the walking around. Yeah. That being able to move about is... Mm, yeah, space is king space, in, in the yeah, RV. Yeah, I would agree. Sorry, that wasn't on the list. That wasn't that on was the list. That was just a side note, fun yeah. fact. That isn't even something for them. That's their choice. I know, but I'm, I'm just sharing with them that they don't have to have a king. I think that a lot of people think they need a king when they go into the RV living. You really don't. Your, your time is spent outside doing other things, so. Just my it's opinion. still your choice. You choose whatever you would like. <laughs> Sorry. No, what Sorry. I was going to say is something that I didn't realize um, that was going to be in going full going full time um, is the community. Finding oh, people perfect. to hang with. Mm -hmm. um, the RV community is just filled with amazing people. They're like-minded, like to explore, seek out adventure, um, and we started finding i mean i love hanging with you and doing things with you but we have found some of our some amazing mm -hmm. rich friendships because of being in the rv yeah, community yeah they've been it's been very surprising and the reason i think we bring this up is is that we started doing the huddles and our community events and stuff but our discussion was this on this was in the car when we were driving somewhere and we got to thinking it's like every every different community group um, we saw it at the Grand Design uh, e Rally, yep. where some people found community in that. Some people um, have alliances and they started the Ally Rallies. Uh, yep. mm -hmm. And then you have, you know, the, the New Mars Rally and all that. Yeah. And... Now, those are great communities, but then you have to almost take a, a subsect of that and 
kind of look at, well, like we have huddles and we have now these crew campouts where it's a smaller group of people that are meeting across the United States. Not a plug, just sharing that right now as we sit, there's a crew camp out going out in Quartzsite. There's almost, what'd you say, 20 RVs there? Like yeah. 40 people? What's neat is though to see people like, they they just form those connections and you see them talking on Facebook and I can't wait to see you here where they're making plans to travel together here. It, it it just gives you somebody to meet up with at an RV park somewhere, go grab you know dinner together or have somebody over. It just makes the RV life um, just more, even more fun. Yeah, because you build the relationships and the, yeah, and and then we were talking about our our events are probably not as much as of kids in them because of the season of life we are, and then there's other. YouTubers and other people that are doing events or rallies that have children or yep. they're more family centric. So it depends on because some of you are working on the road or you're going to go on the road full time and you're wondering, well, can I take my kids? Well, yeah, but you also in that event process, you have to find people in community that have maybe kids your same age or teenagers. And there are different communities based on that. And we we didn't think of it really in the beginning and then as you're on the road you find it so if you're going to go this route look for those events yep. i think probably put them into your schedule that first year and say okay i'm going to go to this event and that event maybe go to this rally and start forming those relationships you know, right out of the box yeah be i think that's just key to be intentional that because mm -hmm. you're if you're going full time you're going to be leaving your your community that you have at home. And you don't realize um, even something as simple as not knowing where you're going, like where's the nearest grocery store, or how do I get, when you're in another community you or in another area of the country, you just start to feel less connected. But if you make friendships and you can meet up with those people, it just seems to be a nice grounding element. So be intentional about finding any community out there that would just fit you and and yeah, start cool. forming those relationships. We held our first huddle in November 21. of 21, that first year We're that we We're the original started. huddlers, baby. We started that in November and we have done 10 huddles since then. Yeah. And 850 individual people have come to our Yeah, there's, different... we have just seen some amazing friendships and connections made, um, not with just Todd and I, but with the with them, mm -hmm. with each other. And it, that's and the way it's just, so, that's absolutely. the way it should be. It, it, it really is. And I, I think, uh, let's touch on this too, is you, you said the, um, when you leave your community or your family or the place you spent all your years working or whatever, and you hit the road, you're gonna find that when you go back to visit, the unfortunate part is, is they don't understand this weird yeah. lifestyle. And you'll find out right away that they don't, they don't understand that you were just in Ohio or Wyoming or whatever and what it was like. Because you start traveling so much that it becomes part of your second nature and the commonality to have those discussions is hard. Mm -hmm. But when you go into a community and you're at like a rally or somewhere like that, and you're like, you're talking to somebody and I was like, yeah, we were just up in South Dakota and we went through Needles Highway and you have this weird commonality of the whole United States. Right. And it really, there, there will be a difference for you when you go back to visit family and friends. Yeah, because they, nothing has, for the most part, they not see. much has changed in the world. You know, there might be a new complex being built here or the highway added on, but for the most part, their world is exactly the same and yours just went poof. Yeah. It's just mind opening and so you, you... You need the new friendships. Yeah, your friendship changes a little bit. We still stay in touch with the people that are back home and mm -hmm. we have good friends there, but it's just different and our road friends uh, the RV community is just amazing. So just be intentional, yeah, that get plugged year, into that. The first year, plug, I would say that first year, be intentional to look at all of the different th places you can go and different communities you can do. I think that would be a really great tip yep. right away because we didn't even think about that. 
No, there was so much we didn't know. I mean, come on, we he didn't even turn the propane on the first night. So. <laughs> Stop. I'm just this saying. Can't keep going like that. I'm just saying, like from know, from not turning the propane I've on grown all up the way so much. <laughs> to to like, why would we have thought about community when we were just trying to figure out how not to freeze? Yeah, that's true. <laughs> right? Or drive down the road. I was so afraid that first few months of just driving. Yeah, so like towing. that that just didn't seem like something that was going to be important because we we're just trying to figure mm, all these things yeah. out. So we're just trying to give you things that, would, that we've learned over the time. That would probably be one of, I think out of it, all of them, it doesn't cost any money. It doesn't, it is just an intentional focus on building or going out and meeting those new people. I think that's yep. a really good tip. It, Cause that goes encouragement and all the way around. That's a really, I think that's probably one of the best ones on the whole list actually. Anything else? Or do you have other ones? That, what, can you think of anything else? That was no. all that was on our original list of what, chatting about. Mm -hmm. Yeah. No, I think this is good. I hope you enjoyed this video uh, because. Hope you got some value out of it and it was helpful for you. Yeah, the new year, 2024, we're on the road and new adventures, new things happening, um, new friendships going to be formed, new huddles. If you wanted to look at our huddle events, you can always go to goswitchitup.com click on the events tab so you can see what our schedule of events are for the year. Um, There's a lot of crew campouts this year, so yeah. that's a great, easy way just to start. Yep. Planning. We, yeah, we have an amazing crew. You would love them. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I'm glad we had the chance to just hang out this evening in our Airbnb. We look forward to being on the road. Um, we might see some of you real shortly in Tampa. If you're watching this video later on, um, we could be on the road already and just look for our schedule of events and we might be able to see you and hang out. Yep. It was a fun little video tonight. It was definitely worth If you're worth going, thinking about going full time, we encourage you mm -hmm. to reach out, ask questions, put them in the comments. We'd love to help you along your journey, but it is definitely um, going to be better than you expected. I feel like we should have had like coffee tonight, like a little like sit around and... I don't drink coffee and the last thing you need is caffeine. Yeah, yeah, it's kind of getting, yeah. <laughs> okay, appreciate that. <laughs> With all that being said, if you're new to our channel, we appreciate it. If you like, leave a comment. It tells the YouTube algorithm. This was a kind of a fun video and other people should find it. It's very important. Even if you put C4YT, which is comment for YouTube, yeah, we started doing that a long time ago thanks to one of our subscribers. So C5YT, even if you don't know what to say, leave a comment, we'd love to hear from you and always hit the subscribe button. Come on, you wanna see where we're gonna be going next, 2024? It's important and it's free, it's free. You can un unlike us later if you want, <laughs> but right now you might like us and that's okay. Thanks for tuning in. We really appreciate you being here and we look forward to seeing you down the road. With Absolutely. all that said, Sheila, we're out. <laughs>